right? So anytime I'm getting these little dash greater than symbols, the little looking arrow, that is telling me that I have um, that internal external reference. I have some kind of parent-child relation that that part, that component is tied back to my assembly. All right, so um, if I'm doing that on, on purpose, which hopefully I'm, uh, I'm making those, uh, those choices, I'm, I'm looking at the assembly. When we do the insert component, I'm telling it to make a new part inside of the assembly. So I'm automatically going in context in the assembly with, with this part. Uh, this is going to be an inch part, and it is asking me now for a plane. Where do I want to sketch at? And the front plane would be a nice convenient spot. And, I, and it goes in and it goes in fairly seamless. I don't even you know, really see anything different except my new virtual component that shows up is all highlighted in blue. Everything else that, well, it was already transparent. Maybe the label's not quite as transparent, but the, the parts go transparent. And I'm, I'm now sketching inside of the assembly. I'm in part mode. I have all my part tools. The, uh, the tabs and their commands are related to the part, not the assembly. All right, so uh, you know those, those couple little clues, the sketch, everything in blue. Uh, one of my habits is to get ahead of myself and just click on the, the front plane and, and tell it to sketch. And then it takes me a few seconds to realize, oh, I'm in an assembly sketch. I haven't generated a new part. All right, so I want to make sure that I'm generating that new part. And in, the, um, in our options, we're going to have the ability to say, don't ever generate a virtual component. Virtual components have their place. All right, so and they're, they're really kind of a love-hate relationship with them. Uh, you either love them or you hate them. And depending on what you do with them, the, the advantage of a virtual component is that it won't exist anywhere outside of the assembly. So like the liquid, I don't need it anywhere else. It's not doing anything for me. It's there for a, an engineering calculation to give me feedback and to provide uh, a good reflection when I run it through the, through the photo rendering. Other than that, don't need it. Uh, so that one will stay virtual. The cap, I need to make, um, you know, what, a 12 up, a 100 up uh, uh, injection mold for the, for the caps. Uh, so it, it pops those, those out really to it. Okay, so I need that one to be its own individual component. It's gonna retain the links, but I wanna, wanna be able to do, uh, do something individually with it. All right, so I'm, uh, I'm zooming in, but my origin is way down here. And I want to tie my center line to it because this is going to be a basic revolve. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail with the cap. I just want to run through the basics of the, of the top down. All right, so vertical, infinite length. Oh, I've got a little bit of lag there. Get it onto the origin. If the, when you say front plane, uh, they're not showing. So does that plane bisect the part? Yes. Oh, okay. And it, it is based on... The way the part comes into the assembly, it's oriented, uh, but the way that the top uh, or the, uh, the the cap that I'm making is going to be oriented is that whatever plane I select in the assembly, it's automatically going to sketch on the front plane in the part. So the orientations may not be exactly the same. So that, that's kind of one of those warning be aware of. It doesn't hurt anything. It's just when you open it up and it's kind of facing this way when you really thought it should be facing this way. Yeah, yeah, okay, whatever. Live with it. Yeah, it's a, you're getting something for, for almost nothing. You, you get what you pay for. All right, so um, on this one, I'm interested in, uh, in maybe bringing in the sketch picture if I can, uh, if I can find it. Uh, I'm not so much worried about bringing it into the assembly. I want to go ahead and get my, my geometry started. And when I looked at um, the, the bottle cap this afternoon, this is... Okay, have a. This is basically going to be something along those lines. At the uh, the intersection, there is it, it's a modified V, but it's still a V that creates the seal. And then we go back to center line for a revolve up and over. There'll be a little bit of a radius there. I don't know if I'm going to include that. And then the safety cap, the the secure cap. Uh, the, the secure tab around the bottom. I can include it in this or I could do them separately. Uh, we'll go ahead and include it and I'll just give it a little bit of a flare taper 
and bring it back so that it looks something like, like that. All right. When I come back and I start relating and my relations, my dimensions go to the assembly, this is where it really becomes in context and officially becomes top down. All right. We are marrying these parts together. And if I have to divorce these parts, I have to take this part out and make it an individual uh, without the, um, the bottle references, I'm going to have to go back and, and remove a lot of these relations, a lot of these dimensions that are tied, and, and put, them in, uh, put them in the sketch on their own um, as, uh, as single entities. So let's give, um, that looks all right, oh, 625. Uh, we'll give it a little bit of thickness. And let's see, a taper. All right, so I don't want to put uh, too much detail. Uh, we'll give the cap a thickness. That's not, certainly not 70. Let's go 3125. The um, item will pick up there. Uh, one of the advantages <coughs> is going to be that uh, I can't really get to that edge. One of the advantages is that I want this to seat onto the midpoint. I can't pick up that cylindrical face, but I can certainly sketch a center line there and go from the center line to my end point, say make that the midpoint. And then that's going to be a nice 90 degree. Um, I don't remember the sizes offhand, so oh, I already picked up the perpendicular, so I don't have to, uh, to do anything with it. Um, continuing with the center lines. Make them equal length. Pardon? Make those two equal length. Oh, you just were trying to get a, you know, uh, I'm going to go with the symmetric. Okay, and with the symmetric comes the collinear. And then when I put a height on it, all right, so, you know, again, two dozen ways to do everything. We just pick your favorite. And then the thickness of the lid, we'll put a little bit more on it. Um, it's somewhere in there. All right, but the main thing, I'm getting geometry established, and then I can come back and, and reference this later. Mm -hmm. So we'll drop the, uh, the fillet in. Uh, we'll give it a 60,000, see what it looks like. That's uh, pretty big, but how about a one millimeter, 40 thousandths, a little better. All right, so I can go through and I can uh, jostle the numbers and ah, also need to give it a tab height. Okay, so we're out of the fillet. And we'll go ahead and put the... Um, an eighth inch is fine. All right. At this point, since I'm in the assembly, in my sketch, creating the revolve, I'm jumping over to the features. The edit component is going to, I'm going to get into and I'm going to get out of uh, that that uh, part file using it. If I turn off the uh, or turn uh, activate the no external references, well, it's not really top down. It will prevent it from accumulating those or trying to uh, to infer those. All right, so it does give me the uh, the choice to uh, to play um, play with those items that way. 360 degrees, and I have a cap. I'll rebuild it. I will edit uh, hit the edit component or right click. Uh, it's not, there it is. Edit assembly. If I turn that off, now I'm back into the assembly mode, and I have something that is now a virtual component inside of my assembly. At the time where I go through and rename it, this is going to be the bottle cap. Yeah, that'll work too. This is not a typing class. Oh. <laughs> At this point, now I can be concerned with uh, save part and external file. When I go to save this assembly, it's typically going to come up and say, do you want to save your internal components? And the first one, no. But this one I do, so bottle cap. And then just to be on the safe side, I tell it same as the assembly. So it, it makes sure that it's going into the same folder. It's not going to a previous folder or the last used. And then once it's saved, the brackets go away. And when I open up that folder in Windows Explorer and my file, uh, file explorer, I'm going to see that file. I am not going to see the liquid because it lives inside of the assembly. I will see that one because I saved it externally and it retains its top-down references. All right. Questions? We're going to do a few more of the, the top-down examples and, uh, and then
tie this tie it back in with the uh, the master model. So with with those strategies, you're going to have a pretty good um, uh, set of tools in your toolbox, I guess. So once you made that uh, that top, could you place it in a different place? In that Don't need way? to. It does not matter. Okay. But you could. You, you could build someplace and stick it over on it. But I know you have. If you want to reuse it, um, if you if you need to reuse it, here, let's let's take a, a quick look. Let me um, oh, jump to the wrong one. Okay, it's a control tab between my open. But like using all different bottle. Well. I don't know, maybe it has two caps to it or something. So you want to take another the mate, over there, so I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the mate is an in-place in the in-place mate. The problem with reusing it is going to be that if uh, if I want to put this on another bottle, I'm I'm not going to choose the top-down strategy. I'm going to make this an individual part from the, the yeah. get-go, and then I will probably put it over in my design library so I can drag it and drop it yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And then it would be a network design library that Anybody that opened the bottle in the in the company in the in the design uh, group would be accessing that same same information. So where the you know our Dr Pepper bottle is a is a red cap and the uh, the Coke bottle is a black cap and we have the uh, the yellow and the green and the you know all of those we could build those into display states or into the configurations and and then everybody could have some mix and match relatively easy. So we're only going to one file. All right, within this one, we get this in place mate, and I can suppress that and move it around. It's just not recommended. I mean, if you understand what the implications are, if you have a real good handle on uh, the basics for, the, for our basic uh, uh, SOLIDWORKS class, it is figure out bottom up and get a real good handle on bringing parts in and applying all those mates. And once you've got that level of comfort with it, then when the top down does something really ugly bad and generates all those nice little red uh, arrows and yellow explanation points, you can go, oh, I know why it did that. I know how to correct it. As opposed to undo, undo, come on, please undo work. <laughs> I guess right. the worst alternative would be to rename that part and make it independent. And the, and the process, and that's, that's a good point, um, the process would be that I can open this up and what I've done in the past is if I edit this sketch, now the revolve is a 360 degree revolve, so it's only related by virtue of the, uh, the sketch. If I was extruding up to a face, uh, another, another component face, all right, then, this, then the, the feature is involved as well as the sketch. If it's just the sketch, I can come up here to my display delete relations and identify everything with one of these arrows, delete it, reapply the dimension manually, hope I didn't miss anything, and there you go, it's now a complete independent part. At that point, it depends on the, um, the complexity of the part. Did I really save any time? I should have built the thing and been done with it. All right, so we're always playing that juggling act of, I, you know, it sounded like a good idea when I started, <laughs> but now that I, you know, the, the light of day shines on it, eh, maybe not so much. Can you just press the ball and then you can use those if you suppress the bottle because of those relations, the, the parent-child relation, the cap gets suppressed with it. It's a down, there's a downstream data, you know, whatever the data will, uh, will catch up to it. All right, so since we're in the sketch, <clears throat> I know that the, uh, the PNG, whatever we had, was in here somewhere. So let's just see how close I got. So quick review, we're going to, I still want to always do insert, but I always end up at tools. So let's go to tools first this time. Do sketch tools and under sketch tools, tools all the way at the bottom, very, very bottom sketch picture. And the sketch picture comes up and I have this, um, this cat picture and it is huge. All right, so my scaling, uh, let's see the width. Let's go from 25 down to one. See how far it, uh, it got lost. And it went back to the origin, which was nice of it. And I know that uh, I measured with the uh, the calipers, so I know that that's about one uh, one and a quarter, one point two. So I can get it roughly centered. And again, I'm going to have a little bit. My camera was a little bit of an angle. I had a little bit of, um, you know, maybe a little bit of error in the um, 
and the curvature of the lens. So my my process then is going to be to rough position, whoops I missed, rough position and yeah I'm getting the curvature of the lens and I'm probably not going to get it too much better than that but I have something now that is um, as far as my documentation I can come back and say that alright this maybe needs to be a little bit longer oh I'm still inside of the sketch I'm not going to go to the uh, to the detail, and even the last one I missed by that little, you know, a couple ten thousandths or whatever. So let's go up to 190, and just based on rough perspective, we'll call it good. All right. Once that's in in place, and I accept the sketch, the sketch is going to uh, to go back, and then I don't really have uh, have a location there, so. If we want to go ahead and do the, the ripples, um, I know the ripple is, uh, is fairly complex, what they, uh, what they generated. Circle. Get off, uh, get off the part a little bit so it's not inferring anything. Uh, we'll go with about a 30 thousandths. I uh, should be able to pick up. Uh, I don't really like going to the fillets. That always makes me nervous. I'd rather go back to the center point on that one or pick up the diameter. <clears throat> Oops, got an extra one in there. And it's going to end up being horizontal. Alright, so if I haven't intersected that too much, then I should be able to just go ahead and do the extrude cut. Uh, I'm not up to vertex. Let's go with a blinding condition and I'll rough it to about right there and call it good. So it doesn't look like it's breaking through, maybe uh, a little on the, uh, the deep side. Uh, we want the temporary axes active. I can pull up my A temporary axis, grab my feature, go into the circular pattern and rough guess 30 now nah, it's a little bit light 50 there we go and then go back and turn the temporary axis off because we really don't want to see all those all blue dots this was our, our red plastic um, material wise edit the material um, what did we decide it was last time okay what did you tell me it was last time <laughs> Maybe the cap is the same. Okay, well, we'll call it good enough, close enough for our purposes. And then um, the red color, I can just jump back into the appearances very quickly at the top level. Uh, I don't think I mentioned, or mentioned in this class anyway, that the appearances are available at multiple levels. I can go to the feature level, I can go to an individual face. I can go to everything, and that's why when you are selecting, you may get multiple items out here. So if I'm in the work area and I go to my appearance, I'm going to see that face, that face alone, the whole revolve feature, the body, which refers back to the solid bodies, or the bottle cap part as, uh, as a whole, All right, and then remove everything. So really our, our choice um, you know, depends on what specific uh, items we're trying to uh, to work with. So throw some some red on it. Oh, it's not red enough. <laughs> and go ahead and save it, and we have our bottle cap. All right. So this is now tied to that that bottle. Uh, just to kind of revisit that. Uh, at the point where we're starting this file, I should have a pretty good handle if I'm going to reuse this and make it make a different. Um, Accessible to different bottles. We won't talk about the threads at this point. Um, we can, yeah, we could go ahead and do the threads. It's going to be the same thing. I'm going to put the helix. I'm going to generate uh, almost the opposite. What I didn't do was all of those little grooves, so it would eject from the mold. You'll do that um, in context of the assembly, right? Um, no, at this point, it doesn't really need to be. One of the things with the thread, let me. Um, uh, How does it know when it's mating? I'm looking for a gross interference. I'm not looking for it to be a perfect interference. Okay, so um, on threads, you're not really going to clock it and rotate it to be an exact 
uh, root diameter to the you to the feet diameters. Profile, you could at least start. Um, you would see it in section. You could potentially see it in section. Yeah. You could rotate it enough to get it there, but it, it comes back to: is it worthwhile? That the half hour, twenty minutes, half hour that I'm going to spend uh, messing around with it, I could I could probably be doing better things. Okay, so uh, a quick uh, look at the, uh, the display states. Our default is, well, it picked up the, uh, the PhotoWorks dis uh, dis display state, uh, the standard display state. And so if I needed a red, we can go red. And let's see, I need to stretch that out a little bit so we can see a little better. Um, add a new display state, we will do one in black. And one in green. All right, so the display states, again, I, I can't really remember when this was, was added as a feature sometime in the last 10 years anyway. It's been around for a little while. It has progressively gotten better to where it's actually useful. So um, as I'm going through this process, then uh, the only thing that I really need to, to be aware of or the, that I mainly need to be aware of is I am currently in the green uh, display state. We can come back over to the part pick up the appearance and it's going to be the bottle cap again. Everything was set to red because I did not come all the way down to the bottom and say all display states is checked, I need to just this display state. So if I had multiple multiple items that I was uh, working on or uh, trying to control, I can change the color globally by saying do this to all the display states and then go back individually and say these need to be whatever they are. All right, so in this case, we'll make one that's uh, green and accept it. And we will well, come back, pick up our next appearance, make sure that this display state, so once it's there, it's staying, it's like, you know, modal, it's staying active. Um, I don't necessarily have to go down, but at that point, I'm checking every time just to make sure. And we'll pick up the, um, Oh, I did that in the green. I thought I switched it over. <laughs> Jeez. All right, we'll try that one more time. So it was good enough to go around the first time. All right, so we get, make sure the black is active. It goes back to red, which is expected. And now we're switching it over to its final color. All right, so let's rebuild, save. Make sure everything is current. And now it would probably be a good idea to make sure it works. Red, black, green. 